Let's take a look at a brand new airbrush that I just picked up. This is the Harder and Steamback Evolution Solo. The Evolution comes in a pretty nice black plastic case, and this is the same one that you get with the Infinity. It comes with an instruction booklet that has a lot of great information in it. And because this is the Solo version, you only get the airbrush in the box, no extras. Now I own and reviewed plenty of airbrushes on this channel, and every time I hold or paint with a Harder and Steamback, it makes me wish that every other airbrush brand was built to this same standard. To me, the build on this Evolution is flawless. It's really as good as it gets. And this one surprised me because it actually has some characteristics that I prefer over the Infinity. But every airbrush is going to have its pros and cons, so let's take a look at this one. The Evolution comes equipped with a 0.2 millimeter needle and nozzle, so to me, that makes this a detail airbrush. A needle and nozzle size like this is going to give you a very acute spray angle. So for precision work, you're not going to have to be right on the subject that you're painting. You're able to back off a little bit and still get in that detail. And since I just bought this one, it came with the new 2.0 needle. It's very easy to tell the difference between the old needle and the new one. All new Harder and Steamback needles have these notches on the back. And this one has two notches on it, meaning that it's the 0.2 millimeter. When you buy the Evolution Solo, it comes with one cup, and this one is two milliliters. But one thing that I just love about Harder and Steamback is that these cups are all removable. So if you'd like, you could unscrew this one and replace it with a five milliliter cup. That comes with the two-in-one airbrush, or you could buy it separately. But my favorite option is this small micro cup. When you have the micro cup on, it doesn't even feel like there's a cup on the airbrush. It almost feels like a side feed. This small cup doesn't come with the airbrush, but it's about $10 and absolutely worth the price. The rear handle on the Evolution doesn't have any extra features like a cutaway for quick flushing the airbrush or one of those trigger stops. For me personally, I prefer this, but I know a lot of people like those features. Just understand that this airbrush does not come with it. One thing that's very unique about the Evolution is that it has a nickel plating rather than a chrome coating. There is an Evolution CR Plus, which comes with chrome, but the base model like this one is nickel. Compared to the Infinity CR Plus, these two coatings look very similar. The nickel coating on the Evolution definitely has a slightly warmer look to it, but one thing that you need to be aware of with nickel is that it tends to tarnish over time. The nickel coating is a extremely corrosion resistant, but as you can see here on my original Infinity, which has a nickel coating, the coating began to dull and kind of fade where my thumb was resting on it. Again, this is no sort of corrosion or rust, it's just discoloration of the nickel. To me, this isn't really a big deal, it's really just aesthetics, but it's something you want to keep in mind that over time where your hand's resting on it, like you can see my thumb here, that the color will start to fade. So if this is something that bothers you, or if you have an allergy to nickel, I recommend going with the CR Plus. Other than that, I think the nickel coating is pretty cool. It has a very unique color, and over time, the airbrush will develop a subtle patina, which I kind of like. And the coating on this is absolutely flawless. I checked the whole airbrush, and I couldn't find one imperfection, which is really incredible. The trigger design is the same one that you'll find on the Infinity. It kind of has this half cutout, kind of scalloped look to it, which offers a lot of grip. Personally, I've always liked the feel of this trigger, so I'm glad to see it on the Evolution as well. And a very nice added bonus is that Harder and Steamback includes a quick adapter. And this will fit into the female end of any airbrush quick release adapter. A whole bunch of brands make these quick release adapters, and the nice thing is that they're all interchangeable. So from here, let's move along to a breakdown so you can see all the internal parts. After removing the needle and this chucking nut, I'm able to remove the spring assembly. It has these three black rubber rings on it that give you some grip and you're able to remove it by hand. To me, this is a better design than the Infinity because you don't need a special tool to remove it. And this spring assembly is just incredibly well built. It's so solid. It consists of three parts, the spring, the guide, and the housing. It's just so well made and the best thing is it's, it's just so fast to break down. If you need to take apart your airbrush, it only takes seconds. And like I said before, I really like this trigger design. A nice added feature too is that this lever is connected to the trigger. This just makes it so much easier to break down and then put back together. The front of the nozzle has a small screw on needle protector. And if you're going in for detail work, it's nice to remove this just to get the needle really close to the surface and also to clean off any tip dry. Again, this is another feature that I actually prefer over the Infinity. The needle protector on the Infinity, which is on the right side of the screen, is held on by friction. It works great and it definitely looks cooler than the Evolution, but a lot of times I find it difficult to remove. 
Naturally, as you're painting, you're just going to get some paint or some reducer around it, which is going to make it harder to remove. And I just found that it's a lot easier to damage the needle tip when you're removing this needle protector on the infinity. And the same thing goes for putting this needle protector back on. If the needle is exposed like it is here, it's extremely easy to damage. So what I usually like to do is unscrew the chuck in the back, pull the needle out a little bit, place this cap on, and then put the needle back in. But on the Evolution, this cap protects the entire needle tip, so when you unscrew it, you don't have to worry about bending the needle. And with both caps removed side by side, I definitely think the Infinity looks a lot better. It's sharper and sleeker, but to me, I just prefer that Evolution cap. I think it works better. Something that really surprised me in the spray test that we'll see next is that this cap actually has characteristics that I prefer over the Infinity. The cap also has some nice knurling on it, very easy to grip to remove, and then once you take this out, you have access to the nozzle, which is free floating. A free floating nozzle will always be my favorite. If you ever get a clog or, you know, some sort of paint jammed in there, it just takes seconds to break apart and clean out. And it also has this small PTFE seal on the back, which seals it within the body of the airbrush. That's as far as I'm going to break this down, but also inside the body of the airbrush is a small screw, which holds a PTFE seal. That seal forms around the needle and prevents any paint from leaking back into the body of the airbrush. And at the bottom of the airbrush, you have this air valve assembly. It's a very nice design too. This whole part unscrews. So if you need to swap it out, it's really easy to do. So that's it for this breakdown. The build quality on this one is just outstanding. No surprises here because this is a harder and Steenbeck airbrush. So let's move along to the most important part, which are the spray tests to see how the evolution performs. First up is the trigger response rate. So if you pay attention to my finger here, you'll see how far I'm pulling back on this trigger in order to get paint. And this response rate is similar, if not identical, to the Infinity. It's not bad, but it's just not as consistent and nowhere near as precise as another airbrush like a Sotar 2020 or an Iwata Micron. With those, when you pull back a tiny amount, you always get paint. This one is just a bit more inconsistent. Sometimes it sprays immediately, and sometimes it sprays paint if you pull back farther. Now, I'm aware that this is very difficult to show in a YouTube video, but this is what I've seen with the other Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes that I've owned as well. They all spray amazing. They have incredibly sharp detail and very fine atomization if you're using a good paint. It's just that that initial start time is sometimes delayed and it just seems to be inconsistent. Again, in no way is it bad by any stretch. It just seems to be the way that these airbrushes are designed and built. A very nice surprise is that the Evolution has a noticeably lower airspeed than the Infinity. I noticed this as soon as I started painting with it and when I measured it, I get an airspeed of around 4.4 meters per second. I was actually really surprised and so happy to see this because when you're spraying close and you're painting some detail work, it's nice to have that lower airspeed. You don't feel it blowing off the surface that you're painting. And for a detail airbrush, a lower airspeed at a similar PSI is always going to be a good thing and something that I'd prefer. And again, I just want to point out that these measurements are not perfect, but as you can see here, the Evolution is very similar to the Custom Micron. To me, the airspeeds felt nearly identical. Oddly enough, the Infinity and the Infinity CR Plus have a higher airspeed that you'll notice right away when you start painting if you switch between the two. So I decided to re-measure the Infinity and I got the same airspeed that I got in my previous test of around 5.5 meters per second. And I think that the reason that the Evolution has a lower airspeed is because of that air cap. And this goes back to what I was saying before, I just think that this air cap is a better design. The one on the CR Plus and the Infinity looks cooler, but I just think this one works and performs much better. And access to the needle tip is just as good on the Evolution as it is on the Infinity. If you need to clean off any tip dry, very easy to do. I've never seen a Harder and Steenbeck have any sort of air leaks and the Evolution is no different. I'm pressing the trigger down with my thumb so that we have air flowing out of the front of the airbrush and I'm just placing on some soapy water here. So there's no bubbles, meaning that there's no air leaks on the Evolution, and I think this just comes down to the precision in which it's built. Moving along to a paint consistency test, I'm just spraying a wider line here, seeing how well the paint flows and atomizes out of it, and it's absolutely perfect. Just like the Infinity, the spray pattern on Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes are as good as it gets. Same thing with the thin line here, just flawless performance. To measure how much detail I can get with this airbrush, I want you to take a look at these five lines here. Some of these lines were sprayed with the Evolution and the others were sprayed with the Iwata Custom Micron Takumi. The thinnest lines that I was able to paint are lines 2 and lines 4. So just looking at this now, see if you could decide which one is the Micron and which one is the Evolution. 
To me, the detail was identical. I was able to get the exact same spray pattern out of both. Just looking at this now, I could barely tell the difference between the two, but line two was the Evolution and line four was the Iwata Custom Micron Takumi. I think this is a better way to show the amount of detail you can get rather than measuring the spray angle because personally I think technique is way more important than the build of the airbrush to get in thin lines. So between the two I was able to get the same spray pattern, the same thin line. The only difference is that the Micron felt more comfortable with that trigger response rate. It just felt more accurate. So in the next few weeks we're going to be working on a new portrait and this time we're going to be painting advanced skin textures. I've been using my Awada Micron for this whole painting and there's a lot of exaggeration in it and it's been a fun one to work on. So for part of this one I switched over to the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution to see how well it performed. I'm showing this one in real time with some cuts in between so you can see how I'm working on it. Mainly painting in some wrinkles and just adding some subtle gradients in. And to me the Evolution sprayed great. It has that very tight and acute spray pattern which I love for detail airbrushes because you can back up a little bit and still get plenty of control, get in some subtle gradients, and you don't have to be right up against the surface like you do with a normal airbrush, you know, like a, an Iwata Eclipse. And my favorite thing about the Evolution was that air speed. I was spraying here around 20 psi, maybe a little bit higher, and to me it felt just like the Micron which I've got accustomed to. When I'm working on any sort of painting with a detail airbrush, this is what I want. I want that low air speed. It just feels so much more comfortable. I kind of wish that I bought this Evolution years ago before I bought the Infinity because I just, I like how this feels a lot more. The only con that I could find with this airbrush is that trigger response rate. Even though it has the new 2.0 needle, it still feels the same as the Infinity. It's just kind of a delay when you're pulling back. I guess if you're painting with Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes for a long time, you probably get used to this. And again, I want to stress that I don't think this is a bad thing. I think they're designed this way. But for me, I just feel like I have way more control with a Badger, like a Badger Sotar 2020, or an Iwata, like the Micron. But that's just my preference and my opinion. Objectively, this is one of the best built airbrushes that you could buy today. And I also think this is sold at a great price. You could pick this one up for around 150 US dollars. Prices fluctuate. Sometimes you can get it a bit cheaper, sometimes a bit more. But around that price, I think you're getting a great deal. There's no question that I'd recommend this airbrush to anyone who's interested in picking it up. It's a true detail airbrush at a very compelling price point. So that's it for this review. I'm very glad that I picked up this airbrush. It's definitely going to go into the rotation. I'll be back here next week so we can get back to some painting. So thank you guys so much for watching.